Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the JBNA Pre-NAB Show. I am really excited this year because we are showing just some spectacular things. But if you don't know what our show is, this is an event we've been putting on for close to 20 years. We bring in our top products, our top vendors, stick them in a hotel room in Vegas just before NAB and make them battle it out for who's the best. I'm just kidding. We bring all of our top vendors in and let them showcase the latest interventions, the latest things they're going to be shipping and showing at NAB. It's a great opportunity opportunity for our vendors and our customers to connect off of the show floor, away from the crowds in a much more intimate environment. And it also gives us an opportunity every year to show something new, something exciting, and for me, always something groundbreaking and cutting edge. And for that this year, we partnered with Christie Digital to show something pretty spectacular. You ready to tell us what this is? Yeah, thanks, Nick. And, and first of all, thank you for hosting this event. The quality relationships and conversations that have been at this pre-NAB show have been phenomenal. Uh, but I'm Chris Barnett with Chrissy Digital, and this is our demo at the event this year. Uh, I think, I hope we're gonna make it an annual event moving forward, but it's the first time we're showcasing this at a trade show publicly. We're calling it virtual projection. Okay, so virtual projection. Now, I'm, I'm sure by now most people are familiar with virtual production. Yeah. We've seen it on LED, we've seen it on green screens, we've kind of, you know, it's become sort of the mainstay of the film industry is to be able to produce from anywhere, yeah. from in front of a screen. Yeah. But you're taking a different twist on it. We are, we are. We're trying to make it more accessible. Uh, the method has been very rigid and very expensive uh, to date. Uh, and people are struggling to create a business model around virtual production, the big LED method of it. Uh, and we're here to solve that problem. So let's talk about some of those complications because those pertain to obviously the big LED video wall. Yeah. Very expensive, very cumbersome. Yeah. The mounting infrastructure, mm. the cost of maintenance, all of that is very expensive, which keeps a lot of people out of the art of virtual production. Yeah, and it's all true. Uh, the maintenance bill alone on big LED is enormous. It's six figures a month just to have an LED wall in standby mode, right? Not even leveraging it. Right. And then we get into the complications of lensing and more ray pattern and all the other issues because you're filming what you see on the wall yep. in real time. So that adds layers of complication. It does, it does. And with, with projection, you can film what's on the wall in real time, but you can do things that you can't do with LED. Like I can focus on the wall, for example. There's not really more way, more ray that I have to worry about. I'm not worried about dead pixels. Um, you know, I'm not worried about, you know, parts of the wall not matching other parts of the wall, right? With color panels not being consistent. Um, it, it's, uh, it's also 4K and Rec 2020 on this projector. That's brilliant. Okay, so now before we get into the what's actually happening here, let's talk about the partners that you've got now, in yeah. this and how it all came together. First, I got to thank you for inviting us uh, and JBNA. It's an honor to be here. Uh, but we have a lot of partners contributing their time, their energy, their equipment to bring this together. Um, and it's basically industry standard virtual production components. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm going to run through the list. It's a list, so okay, I've got to look yeah, at my phone, right? Um, we're, so we're allowed to cheat on this we, one because it's a got, big list. It's a, it's a long list of people coming together who all believe in the system design. We've got Kino Flow here providing the RGB WW LED lights, right, for the image-based lighting. Yeah, we're going to get into those. Those are really amazing. They're really cool. Uh, we have Red Digital providing cameras for us. Love They're it. V Raptors, and the Phantom Track is just phenomenal for this workflow. Uh, we have Aja here contributing the sync generator and also recording devices. Uh, ProPsych is providing the floor for us and the curve, which is, makes the beautiful uh, light key, you know, very, very easy to pull. Hey, there's battery back there. Yeah, uh, I already mentioned JBNA, but VizRT is here with their That's switcher. Right. Got right. the vision Got over there, capturing. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Zeiss is providing uh, glass and tracking. Uh, we have Draper with the screen, four wall with cables, Assimilate and live effects. Nice. Right, they're they're pulling the key. There's the media server here that's kind of driving everything. Um, Sim plates, right, provided the content. We have Silver Draft providing the compute. Uh, Eaglegot Studios also chipped in for content, and there are many, many more that so, people have contributed. So what I love about the story that you just told right there, these are all well-known companies yes. that have been in the industry. Yes. There's nothing secretive about them. No, you've taken off-the-shelf tools, correct, and built this amazing solution out of it. Yeah, so it, well done. It was it was actually pretty simple. Uh, I've been working in virtual production for a little while, and so I already had the partnerships and the friends in the business, kind of knew the tools of the trade, and what we did is we replaced the LED wall with a projector. But it's not just doing that. Our projector is a special type of projector. Mm -hmm. um, we're running what's called Mirage Pro on it. 
and Mirage Pro enables a high frame rate mode, so the projector runs super fast. Okay, well, I've, how fast? I've clocked it at 480 frames per second. Right now, we're running it at 240 frames per second, and that high frame rate allows us to do magic with light. Okay, let's talk about magic. Let's talk what, about magic? Let's talk about magic, because okay. um, the film industry is magical, so let's it talk is. about what makes this magical. Yeah, uh, industrial light and magic, right? Yeah, yeah there yeah. it is. Um, so th the magic is, because you have all of that light coming out of the projector, you're able to then leverage more light data. And so your production is more valuable inherently. You've got more content you can capture and manipulate in order to make your production more flexible, uh, more creative. Um, there's a lot of benefits to having more light available to you. And all the components around it are able to keep up with that speed. Uh, the KinoFlow Mimics, for example, they top out at 30,000 frames per second. Mm. That's, you know, light a speed, lot. right? Um, and the cameras, right? I think they top at 600 right, frames per second, the reds here. Um, but all together, we're running at a 5994 project in terms of what's being safe. Traditional broadcast speed. Traditional yeah. broadcast speed. But internal to all of the uh, mechanisms, mechanisms that we have, they're actually just running faster than that. So everything is overcranked. And when it runs faster, it produces what we call subframes within mm -hmm. a frame. And so these are light realities, right, over time that we can then leverage. So we're leveraging multiple light realities all within a frame in order to do magic. So case in point, uh, for the audience at home who's watching this right now over my shoulder, they see a beach scene. Yeah, right? correct. But point of fact, the camera is just seeing a green screen. That's right. And if you look at our off-board monitors here, uh, if they're in if they're in view, you can see that the camera is literally seeing a perfect. Yeah, chroma. I'm staring at us over there on this monitor, and we're behind a great key. It's, which it's very, very, very even, right? Um, and it's actually the mimics are projecting light, green light, onto this wall. We don't see it because no. it's subframe and it's super fast. Uh, but it's happening, and it's not really degrading the image at all because we're hiding the green by inverting it with magenta, and that turns that green into a gray. And then the projector compensates for that gray that's hitting the wall by incorporating you know, video black in addition to the content, and it all evens out. So at the end of the day, you can get an in-camera visual effects capture yep. simultaneous to getting the green screen chroma capture, and so you have a safety. Producers just yeah. love the idea that they can walk into their production allow the crew and the talent to be creative and make decisions on the day and really vibe with each other and not feel committed, right? Overcommitted to what's well, been pre-planned. And let's talk about some of the commercial applications yeah, that yeah. sort of come in this is, yeah, as you talked, we can have a camera that sees the, the image that we see. We have a camera that sees green. Sure. So we can certainly have flexibility, but right. that also means in the post-production world, as you mentioned, yeah. you're getting that safety on green, yeah. which then we can take in post. But in real-time production, yeah. in corporate, in education, broadcast. in broadcast, we get a better key for the production switcher. You do. We you do. get and we get interactivity for the people in front of the screen because they're able to see the content in real time, interact with it and understand it. That's right. So we're going to get better let's just say acting, yeah. you know, in front of the camera because yeah. they actually are in the moment as well. 100%. Um, it's kind of a, a known pain point for all kinds of talent, even A-level talent um, to be in a green screen environment for days on end, yep. it takes a toll psychologically. It's also just difficult. I mean, if you're trying to act to a tennis ball that's hung on a str yeah. like, string and it's supposed to be a dinosaur, like, good luck, right? Yeah, yeah. then it's not a very scary tennis ball. It's not, right? right? Let's draw some eyes. So on. now we can give people the reference. We can yeah. give people that inspiration, that, that immersive uh, space so that they can act and feel natural and simulate reality. That's yep. the whole point of virtual production. Now, I guess this is a good segue to kind of talk about the lights a little bit and how they key into this. Yeah, I did that sure. key. Um, uh -huh. But so these are not traditional LED lights that no. you would throw up in any old studio. No. These are actually LED panels. They're, they're very that you would high use, quality. You know, in an, in an LED world. Now, part of that means we can use them for atmospheric lighting as well. Uh, well yeah. They're showing the same content back there so that we're getting the correct lighting in the foreground. Yeah, so what Nick is saying is that essentially, or actually, the plate that you see here is pixel mapped to all of these lights. So it's an image-based lighting system. So you get proper reflections. Yep. As your plate updates, these panels will update in real time. So if there's a dramatic thing that happens in your scene, that will be reflected right on your subject. Yeah. Um, and it's RGBWW, and so the days of having the lobstery kind of red yeah, from yeah, RGB right. LED is gone, right? It's a high-quality light system. So let's talk a little bit about 
who this is aimed at, the market that yeah. you know, this is gonna go into. Who's, who is this helping the most? So the original inspiration was to help my friends. So my friends in the industry, cost? yeah, I mean, like I've got a lot of friends in virtual production and uh, they all started losing their jobs because studios that built big LED couldn't create a winning business model around it, shut their doors. And then there's a lot of pain in that transition, right? Yeah. And so a lot of my friends were on the street um, over the past couple of few years. And it's always been a dream to understand how I can create accessibility. And that's really what we're doing. We're creating accessibility to a workflow uh, it's you're dropping a zero, I like to say, because it's true on your production budget. That's just a big your number. Upfront, you know, but then your maintenance too budget reduces to almost nothing compared to an LED uh, maintenance fee, and so that changes the math on the business model and allows people to access it. And when you say, how does this apply? It applies to every single type of production you can imagine. Yeah. We're here at a broadcast show. You can do multi-camera with this yep. very easily. You just think of this as a green screen environment, even though it's not, right? Yeah, yeah. Like we're in an immersive Well, the camera thinks it is. The camera thinks it is. And so you can plan your production that way. Yeah. You can have multiple cameras. So it works for broadcast, commercial video. Agencies love this concept yeah. because you can shoot once and, and then apply all yeah. of your different treatments and show your client, look, these are the hundred different treatments you have to choose from, and then they can choose, and then it's a very easy process then to just finish the job. I mean, it's a great East Coast, West Coast, UK versus, you know, US. You know, we can certainly start to use content and shoot it once and, and replicate it multiple times with different backgrounds. Yeah, now, absolutely. Which has always been a mainstay in, you know, green screen production, yeah. but this adds that element of real time into what is typically not seen in green screen. Yeah, right? yeah, and we're just creating a better method. It's easier, it's more pleasant to be in an immersive environment yeah. where you can see all of your things, um, but it also applies to film, right? Mm. So uh, we, can, we can apply ourselves to any market potential that wants to do production, and we can solve a lot of the pain points that people have had and expressed over the past five years of virtual production. I, I really look at this for, you know, when I look at corporate America and education that are becoming the next broadcasters. Yeah. Right, if we look at, you know, the content on YouTube, the content in all these other areas, yeah. they're not necessarily coming just from studios. That content is coming from podcasters and, you know, the YouTubers of the day and, you know, all the corporations that are creating content about themselves. And a lot of them are wanting to do virtual production as well. Yeah. But the complication of the big LED wall and all the other layers yeah. are very expensive and tedious and cumbersome with a lot of training and other elements. Right. And this could cut all of that okay. and allow virtual production to be really adopted by so many different venues, not just from a complication standpoint, but from a cost standpoint. Yeah. Right. Bringing that cost down to an achievable, you know, metric. Yeah, I mean, we built this demo in a day. It's crazy. It felt like longer than that. I'm just gonna say. <laughs> we, we've been here. We've been here too. It was a long. Too day. many days in the room. All right, we've got a crazy day ahead of us. We're gonna be demoing this all day, so we should probably get the doors open and get this started. Uh, thank you so much for being here and choosing us to showcase this for the first time. Uh, this is pre NAB. We've got this live here. If you want more information, check out Christie Digital's website, or you have an actual microsite for this as well, right? Yeah, you can just Google virtual projection, Christy Digital, and it'll be the top result. Go hit that website immediately. Find out more about this. I think you're going to be seeing this in every store very, very soon. Thanks, and uh, thanks for being here, man. Really Thank appreciate you. it. Yeah, yeah. yeah.